This is a Construction Tales brief safety topic. In this video, I'm going to discuss the history of the safety shoe. While researching on this topic, I found an interesting safety shoe quick fact. Logging boots are required by OSHA to be cut resistant under standard 29 CFR 1910.266D1V. My question is, how cut resistant is cut resistant when you're up against a chainsaw blade? I would imagine that the boots must be very heavy. This required heavy burden must make the average logger have lean, mean legs for days after wearing heavy boots each day. I found this fact to be interesting since I come from a family of loggers who work the woods of Oregon. Now, you may ask as to why are the hardened tip safety shoes even required? The goal is to protect your toes in the event that an extremely heavy item drops on a worker's foot. The other danger is that this sheet of metal that's in your boot serves as a guillotine for all the digits upon impact on the foot. Many, many moons ago, the first protective boots were wooden boats called sabots. A sabot can be defined as a kind of simple shoe that was shaped and hollowed out from a single block of wood. This heavy footwear style was traditionally worn by French and Britain peasants. These quote, wooden boats work to protect workers from falling objects. I can only imagine how heavy and uncomfortable these shoes must have felt on the feet after a long day in the field. Sabots protected farmers on the field from sharp objects and protected toes in case a horse or cow stepped on them. During the early Industrial Revolution, workers used sabots to destroy machinery by throwing them into the gears of factories to stop production. The word sabotage came from this activity. The first attempt at steel toe protective technology was reported to come from Germany back in 1930. This very first boot was intended for industrial workers and ended up being geared for the military. Based upon my research, it is unclear as to exactly who actually invented the steel toe boot concept. Believe it or not, the non-commissioned German soldiers had metal caps placed in their boots. During my research, I learned that the footwear company Red Wing Shoes, based in Red Wing, Minnesota, was founded by Charles H. Beckman back in 1905. Within 10 years of starting up, Red Wing Shoes was producing 200,000 pairs of boots each year. Over the years, I've owned quite a few pairs of Red Wings. I was on a deck job where I was working in the basement with the bricklayers. We were wading in a few inches of water all day in the basement. To my pleasant surprise, my socks stayed dry all day. In the past, I've kept my Red Wings and went to a cobbler and had them resold. They last for a long time despite the rough conditions the boots were subjected to each day. Red Wing Shoes became the preferred manufacturer of the American soldier's boot during World War I. Red Wing Shoes was the first company to mass manufacture steel toe boots for American soldiers during World War II. Prior to World War II, it was actually cheaper to just pay off a family after a fatality and then get a new worker versus introducing any form of personal protective equipment on site, known for short as PPE. Imagine how rough it was for the families of workers who had gotten injured while at work during the Industrial Revolution with no PPE and no laws in place to protect the worker? The passing of various U.S. legislation all worked to put the average company on the hook for compensation after worker accidents. Wisconsin was the first state to pass the Wisconsin Workers' Compensation Act back in 1911. By 1948, Mississippi was the last state to get on board with protecting their workers via compensation laws. Once legislation was passed and a company becomes liable, it's time to get workers' compensation insurance to offset the costs of accidents. The insurance representatives then collectively work to force the entire industry to reduce the likelihood of accidents through the introduction of safer practices and protection for workers. If a company chooses to not work safer, then it's a guarantee that company insurance premiums will soar to new heights. When it boils down to it, companies see workers as a financial liability. 
Therefore, they are only making the work environment safer to keep costs down. Protecting the worker is a side effect of keeping worker compensation costs down. No matter the reason, it is still much easier and safer to work within dangerous environments than ever before in history. Over the years, I used to hear about the various construction urban legends while at work. Seasoned workers said that unfortunate workers who fell during a 1930s concrete pour for a bridge were not rescued. The deceased worker drowned in concrete and became a part of the foundation since retrieving the body was impossible. However, I struggle to find an actual published story on these urban legends. Well, my friend, this wraps up what I have on the history of the safety shoe. This concludes this Construction Tales safety topic. Come back for more topics soon.